Today we're going to be introducing indeterminate powers. We've done lots of different indeterminate forms to this point, uh, products, differences, things like that. Today we're getting to the last of them, the indeterminate powers. So please add this into your notes. All right, so in looking ahead to how are we going to deal with these types of problems, the thing that makes these difficult for us, in many of these cases at least, is just the fact that we have this exponent here. It's the power that's causing it to be indeterminate. And so the way that we're going to deal with it is we're actually going to deal with it the way that we did when we were trying to do a derivative where we have x in both the base and in the exponent. We're going to end up having to do the natural log in the equation. Now, because of that, it's also useful to see one other curious little fact. That if we do the natural log of a particular function's limit, that's the same as doing the limit of the natural log of that function. All right, so this is the first problem that we're going to be using as an example to go through this. Now, first of all, Notice what happens if I plug the 0 in for x. If I started by plugging 0 in for x, I'd end up getting 1 to the power of infinity. That's one of our indeterminate powers. And so that tells me that I'm going to have to be using some sort of a different method. Now, in order to do this, normally when we look at these functions, we only worry about writing in one side of it. We are only writing in limit as x is approaching 0 from the right-hand side of our function. But technically speaking, we're really looking at an equation here. y equals 4x plus 1 to the cotangent of x. And we're really figuring out then what is the limit as x is approaching 0 from the right-hand side of y and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of y is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of the 4x plus 1 to the cotangent of x, because that's what y equals. All right, so once we've written it like this, where we've gone ahead and written it as the limit of y equals the limit of our function, now we can go ahead and look at getting rid of our exponent. The exponent is causing it to be indeterminate. So we're now going to take the natural log of both sides. When we do that then, we're going to have the limit as x is approaching 0 of the natural log of y equal to, our limit as x is approaching 0 from the right hand side, of the natural log of 4x plus 1 to the cotangent of x. Alright, now remember why we like doing that why we like to take the natural log of both sides. It allows us to grab the exponent and pull it outside of the natural logarithm using our logarithm rules. So nothing changed in terms of writing the limits, nothing changed on the left hand side. What does change is I now pull down that cotangent of x and that's now times the natural log of 4x plus 1. All right, now having done that, we can now start thinking about how would we now actually treat that? How would we find that limit? Well, again, the left-hand side stays the same. It's going to stay the same for quite a while, actually. And in order to be able to use something like L'Hopital's rule, I'm going to end up having to actually go back to this and turn this into a fraction. Okay, so... Uh, the natural log, I, I've seen in the past that I really want my natural log to be on the top. And so that means I'd want to turn the cotangent of x into the fraction. Now I've got two ways I could do that. One way is I could turn the cotangent into cosine over sine. The downside of that though is that on the top I'd be doing cosine of x times the natural log and it's going to get kind of messy to find that derivative. It turns out it can actually be easier 
if instead of thinking of cotangent of x as cosine over sine, I can think of cotangent as 1 over tangent. Because if I do that, I'm actually going to end up with something simpler for finding the derivative. So let's go ahead and write it that way. So I'm going to write this as the natural log of my 4x plus 1 over tangent of x. Having done that, we can go ahead and now apply L'Hopital's rule, although everything else is just going to carry down all the limits and everything else. All right. So now, with L'Hopital's rule, I find the derivative of the top, which is the natural log of 4x plus 1. In order to find the derivative of that, remember I do 1 over whatever is inside of the natural log, so that's the 4x plus 1, times the derivative of that inside. The derivative of 4x plus 1 is 4. So I just use chain rule there on the top. And on the bottom I do the derivative of tangent. Yep, the derivative of tangent on the bottom then is secant squared of x. And so our limit on our left hand side it just carries down. On the right hand side though I want to try plugging in the 0 and Hopefully, I'm not going to end up with an indeterminate form at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and try plugging in that 0, see what we get. So that's going to be 1 over 4 times 0 plus 1 times 4 over secant squared of 0. Now when I do those calculations, this gives me 1 over 1, so that's just 1, and then that 1 times 4, that's going to give me 4, so I get a 4 on the top, over, now we do secant squared of 0. Well, secant is 1 over cosine, so what's cosine of 0? 1. Okay, so then that would be 1 over 1, which is 1, and 1 squared is 1. Yeah, so it's going to be 4 over 1, so that just equals 4. The good news is, we did all the tough work. The bad news is, we're not actually done with this one. Because remember that with this problem, we were actually asked to figure out what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of y. But right now, this is the limit as it approaches the natural log of y. And so, for one last step, I need to turn this left-hand side into just a y and not a natural log of y. Well, what can I do to natural log of y to make it equal y? We do e to the power of the natural log of y because e to the power of the natural log of y equals y. So that means that for my equation here, I'm going to do e to the power of both sides. So on the left side, yes, my limit is still there. Its limit is x is approaching 0. But now, instead of ln y, it's just y equals. And then I'm also doing e to the power of the right side. So that's going to be e to the power of 4, which is actually a number. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as e to the power of 4. If you need to get a decimal, you can do that in your calculator. But with these irrational numbers, I like to just leave it in this kind of a form instead. But notice then what this is actually saying. We're told here that the limit as x is approaching 0 from the right-hand side of y equals. So that left-hand side is really saying what we started with and what we were looking for. We we're being asked to find what is the limit of this function. And in this case, it just happens to equal the irrational number e to the fourth. All right, now for this one, again, we're going to start the same kind of way, where I'm seeing that y actually equals this function here, this e to the x plus x to the power of 1 over x. And I'm going to end up writing it as the limit of y equals.
And I end up needing to use the same technique I used in the last problem because this, again, if I plugged in 0 at the start, it would give me 1 to the infinity, an indeterminate form. All right, so once we've written it this way, the reason why I've done this is so that I can actually take the natural log of both sides. So let's go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. And then once we've taken the natural log of both sides, the whole reason for doing that, remember, is so I can grab that exponent and pull it outside. All right, and now that I've done that, I now need on the right-hand side to be able to use L'Hopital's rule. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a fraction. Notice that since this is already 1 over x, it tells me how to set up my fraction. And so the natural log will be on top, so it's natural log of e to the x plus x. And on the bottom, it's just x. All right, so then we go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule on the right-hand side, which means find the derivative of the top and the bottom separately. On the top, derivative of natural log, of course, is 1 over whatever's inside of the natural log, so that's the whole e to the x plus x. But we are having to use chain rule here, so I'm going to have to then multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of e to the x plus x, which is e to the x plus 1. And that is all over derivative of the bottom. Derivative of the bottom is just 1. All right, now having done that, let's go ahead and try plugging in the 0 and see what that gives us. And remember that when I plug in a number like this, I don't write limit anymore. I'm only writing limit as x approaches 0, as long as there's actually an x in there. And yes, technically it's over 1, although we know that over 1 just equals the same thing. All right, and e to the 0, of course, equals 1. And so this ends up being 1 plus 0 on the bottom, which is just going to be 1. 1 over 1 is 1. Okay, so that's going to be 1 times e to the 0 plus 1, so that's going to be 1 plus 1, so that's going to be 2. So the right side equals 2. It actually told us something useful, so we can go ahead and proceed with that. All right, and so we now know that the limit as x is approaching 0 from the right-hand side of the natural log of y equals 2. But remember, I'm not actually done yet. I still have to make it into the limit as x is approaching 0 from the right-hand side of just y. And so remember, I'm taking both sides... I'm raising them both e to the power of that side. So that's why the left side becomes a y, because e to the natural log of y equals y. And on the right-hand side, that's going to be e to the power of 2. Well, and I can go ahead and stop there. Yes, you can calculate it as a decimal if you wish, or you can just leave it as e squared. This is the last example we're doing for this one. But for this one, I figure you have the basic idea down now. I want you to work this one through first on your own, and then just check it against the work as we put it up here. So here's your first step. We're needing to actually do this method, because if you did try plugging in the 1 at the start for x, you'd end up with 1 over, or 1 to the power of infinity. And 1 to the infinity, of course, is one of those indeterminate forms. So then we take the natural log of both sides to get this. And the reason why we take the natural log of both sides is so I can pull out that exponent. And so this is what you're looking at at that point. And now that we're here... Now we can go ahead and start looking to apply L'Hopital's rule, which means go ahead and write it as a quotient. So 
take this entire right hand side, write it as a single fraction. And in this case, since we have a fraction already in there, setting it up as a fraction is hopefully a little bit more straightforward. It's going to be the natural log of x over 1 minus x. And now that we've gotten there, we do that so that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So go ahead and do that. And so for using L'Hopital's rule, we take the derivative of the top. Well, derivative of natural log of x is just 1 over x. Derivative of the bottom just gives me negative 1. So really then, we're figuring out what is the limit as x is approaching 1 from the right-hand side of just a negative 1 over x. In order to do that then, go ahead and plug your 1 in for x. And when we plug 1 in for x, we end up with a negative 1 over 1, which of course just equals negative 1. Now remember at this point I'm not done yet. I don't yet know what the limit is as x approaches 1 from the right hand side of y. My equation up above only tells me the limit of the natural log of y. And so in order to make that into just a y, I do e to the power of both sides. So I end up doing e to the power of negative 1, which is just 1 over e. And so then that would be our final answer.